The following program is intended for mature audiences. Booty's Revelation. <laughs> the New World Order. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. It's October 11th. Happy Friday. So today in the news, the Attorney General Alejandro Mayorkas and the Inspector General Horowitz are blocking important information right before the election could affect the election. Mayorkas is withholding information about the Afghan refugee that was planning an election day terrorist attack. And Horowitz is blocking information till after the election about how many federal agents were involved on the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Also, Obama reveals lackluster support for Kamala Harris in the black community. These headlines and more are coming up right now. All right, first news is from, uh, first headline up today is from Revolver. DOJ Inspector General refuses to release damning January 6th report until after election would disclose true number of government informants. This is huge news because as we have surmised that this was a federal operation. Now, people did gather um, at the Capitol on January 6th for the Stop the Steal rally, over a million people were there to hear Donald Trump speak. Several thousand went to the Capitol afterwards, uh, which resulted in a riot. Most of those people were egged on by federal agents, including Ray Epps. Now they say Ray Epps isn't a federal agent. It's more than likely military intelligence. Um. But why was he there by himself urging people, particularly young people, to go into the Capitol, which is a crime, and that he was never charged? And then we have the whole fake pipe bombs at at, at the uh, Republican headquarters and the Democratic headquarters on the morning of. Very, very suspicious. Um, I'm going to ask you to engage the channel, though. Like, subscribe, share the podcast, uh, leave a comment. And check me out on social media, X, Facebook, Get Our Minds, True Social, Substack as well. Also visit my other website, libpop.org, learn about libertarian populism. And we're going to be talking about populism today, but let's get back to this article here from Revolver. And the reason this comes up is because Thomas Massey was questioning uh, Inspector General Horowitz And this is a tweet uh, from Thomas Massey. Yesterday in weaponization, I questioned Inspector General Horowitz about the number of confidential human sources who entered the Capitol, not just who were there, but who entered the Capitol on January 6th. Horowitz said the number won't be known before the election. Biden-Harris doesn't want the Fed's role on January 6th known. Why? Well, one of the reasons why as can be surmised, is because the January 6th riot, and particularly the crimes committed there, the enter, the trespassing, the entering of the Capitol building, and, and then subsequent vandalism, uh, was a crime, but was orchestrated and led by federal 
assets, informants, and, and in some instances, actual agents. So they don't want, this is all they have is January 6th. You notice that during the debate, the vice presidential and the presidential debate, they did, in fact, go on, both Harris and Wallace went on to evoke January 6th. Because for them, that's the only petard they have uh, to raise in the vein of political violence. Now, it wasn't really political violence. It was a rally. Um, and usually Trump rallies don't have violence, and that's why it's suspect. And a lot of the people that were there on January 6th were suspect. Some were led uh, to get out of hand and so forth and so on. But a lot of other people uh, just went into the Capitol because they thought it was okay. All right, moving along now to uh, more headlines from Post Millennial. Now, you might have seen this. This is Mallorcas refuses to answer for Biden-Harris administrations allowing Afghan national charged with plotting Election Day terror attack entry into the U.S. The story goes on to say, and this was, I believe, uh, Jackie Heinrich, I believe, was the Fox reporter that asked this question during the briefing where Attorney General Mayorkas was there via Zoom call. And she asked, how was this man brought into the U.S.? Was screening, what screening did he undergo? What did he apply for to get here? And Mayorkas declined to answer the question, saying that it was not the right setting to do so and spoke on the crisis of the Hurricane Milton. I'm here in North Carolina communicating with individuals who are still conducting search and rescue operations. Over 200 people have lost their lives in Hurricane Helene. We have reports that at least 10 individuals have lost their lives in Milton. It's more than that now. I've been very pleased to answer your question in a different setting, but we're here to talk about emergencies and support, blah, blah, blah. But what that setting will be uh, is yet to be determined. The fact of the matter is, is that he's dodging a very legitimate question. And it turns out some of the um, information is leaking out that he was brought over uh, by the CIA because he had worked for the CIA. And that's the problem right there, because if you know anything about the CIA, particularly the left branch of the CIA, I should say, if there is such a thing, that the, the CIA nurtures Islamic terrorism. And I, I don't want to digress too much in here about madrasas in Pakistan and how the CIA funded madrasas in Pakistan to teach young Islamic men to hate America. So let's... Um, Let's go on to some other headlines here. I mean, that's a the thing here is that this is a huge concern because right before the election, we have reporters asking for information about why the Biden administration let in an Afghan terrorist. And there was questions about whether or not these people were being properly vetted in the first place, which obviously they're not. So there is some questions uh, surrounding the fall of Afghanistan, obviously, and then the bringing of Afghan people here. Supposedly, he was radicalized after he was here. Um, it, it's hard to determine. I mean, people that have fervent belief can easily be radicalized. Look what's happening with half the country supposedly wanting to vote for Kamala Harris. How, how could people be convinced of such things? It's really a psyop, a demonization campaign against Donald Trump. Why? Because he's a populist candidate. The elite don't want a rising populism because it's their challenge, it's a challenge to their power. Speaking of challenges to power, real clear politics, Teamster President Sean O'Brien, Democrat Party is bought and paid for by big tech companies. Sean O'Brien went on to say, 
I'll be honest with you, I'm a Democrat and they fucked us over for the past 40 years. Not all of them, but for once we're standing up as a union, I'm probably the only one right now saying, what the fuck have you done for us? And I'm getting attacked from the left. Since I've been in office two and a half years, we've been given Democratic machine $15.7 million. We've given Republicans about 340,000, truth be told. People say the Democratic Party is the party of the working people. They're bought and paid for by big tech companies. Indeed, they are. It's You really have to understand what corporate fascism is. So it's, if you know anything about corporate capture, basically corporations and their intelligence operations and their... Um, I really should say they're corrupt. The corrupting agencies, their lobbying is the way that they get involved in government. And so what we have is really corporations and the rich individuals behind these corporations controlling government. And then you have, <laughs> the funny thing is, then you have the government turning around and controlling uh, what those companies do. And that's not necessarily the case. It's a circle jerk. It's, what, the, what private industry can't do, they have the government do. And what the government can do, they have private industry do. So it, they work in tandem. It's not, they make it sound like they're two different entities. Like there's the private sector and there's the, the government. And... To be honest with you, there there isn't. It isn't a difference. They're one and the same. It's corporate fascism. So the government is controlled by corporate power. And what private industry can't do, they have government do. Moving on to the next story. New York Post is reporting Obama admits Harris campaign doesn't have energy uh, of his White House run claims black men opposed to her aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. What we really see here is that that's not necessarily the case. Black men aren't opposed to having a woman as president. Black men are opposed to having Kamala Harris as president because she's apparently without challenge the most inauthentic politician that has come onto the onto the national scene in some time so people of all stripes could could can read or smell authenticity okay she's not authentic and so she no matter how many press conferences you have she will never be seen as authentic because she's just not. She's she's vapid. And as the the more she tries to in 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 ingratiate yourself herself with the electorate, the more it fails. Well, there's a reason here for this. Fox News is reporting now it's 82 days. Kamala Harris has yet to do a formal press conference since uh, merging as the Democratic nominee. Harris has done more interviews lately, but not ho hold a, a formal presser. Excuse me. Um, just a reminder what a formal press conference is. It's with an open press pool, usually, I mean, technically, she could have one in the White House briefing room. I would consider that a formal press conference. A real formal press conference is not just with the White House pool, but with any and all journalists that want to attend. That would be a formal press conference. She hasn't had one. She will not have one. The reason being is that she can't answer off-the-cuff questions. She can't, she could barely read or, or make prepared statements. So we saw the other day when her uh, teleprompter went out, she was stuck. 
And this is, and even the National Review reported, she doesn't even know her own stump speech by heart. Very, very sad situation. And the fact that she's garnering the, the amount of support is I don't even understand. You know, it, even, you know, if you're not a Trump supporter, either hold your nose and vote for Trump or, or I, I can't see you casting a ballot because you're going to be to blame. If you cast a vote for Kamala Harris and she ends up women, winning, uh, you're going to be to blame to, to ushering this per- person in office. Next headline up is from PJ Media. Prepare for the worst gaslighting of the economy yet. We've already saw this happening. If you were on Drudge this morning or if you were looking anywhere in the media, including Politico and other places, they're telling you that the economy is fine, that prices have gone down, which which is an outright lie. Prices don't go down. We just had the most recent inflation report said 2.5%, which means prices go up 2.5%. That's the price index. So... As PJ Media states, wait uh, wait for the worst gaslighting on the economy yet, which is, it, it's happening as we speak. Before we get into more economic news, I just want to go over a couple of Federalist articles. Uh, Kamala Harris is too stupid to be president. This is by Kylie Griswold. And of course... They go on to say Democrats have fallen in line behind a geriatric and mentally impaired candidates before. They'll gladly fall in line behind a stupid one now. Univision hosted a Latino's ass town hall with Kamala Harris. On Thursday night, and it was about uh, as airheaded and disingenuous as you'd expect. Here was one of the word salad from the first five minutes, remarkably in a response to a question about two hurricanes that had just decimated the southeast of the country. Leadership is about understanding the importance of lifting people up, understanding that the character of our country is such that we are people who have ambitions and aspirations, dreams and goals for ourselves and families, and we are entitled to have a leader who then invests in that. The two visions of our country simply put, or that one is about the future and the other one is about the past taking us backward. I guess she's referring to Trump. And I do believe that American people are ambitious and aspirational about investment in the future in the way that are optimistic while being clear-eyed. I don't know. I don't know what the hell that is. (laughs) If that was a question about you know, and this is a town hall, so she doesn't have a teleprompter, and these are prepared, canned responses that are interchangeable because, as the Federalist pointed out, these are canned answers that she's pl- applying to different questions. And even like the 60 Minutes, apparently, now we need to see the release of the 60 Minutes interview transcript, and we should see... The, all the footage as well, because apparently they had put an answer to a question and then they changed the answer, uh, Kamala Harris's answer to a question regarding Benjamin Netanyahu, prime minister of Israel. So now, so basically she has these canned statements that don't really apply, don't answer the question, but are just political statements. And so I don't know how anybody would be convinced of such things. Fox News is reporting Politico says Harris is running on dream economy, but voters aren't noticing. Food prices have increased 22.8% since the Trump era four years ago. A Politico article on Thursday questioned why Vice President Kamala Harris wasn't getting polling boosts from the current dream economy. Under the headline, Harris is riding a dream economy into the election, maybe too late for voters to notice. Politico economics correspondent Victoria Gita wrote that the current numbers on inflation, unemployment, and GDP show a solid economic picture. They do not, actually, if if you could see. For the vice president ahead of the election, the question is whether it's too late for Vice President Harris to get a credit for to get credit for it. 
there aren't numbers. Growth is tepid at best. The unemployment picture is mixed. It went up, then it went down a little bit, then it went up again. The inflation numbers, we just had um, a rate hike of a quarter of a point, or was it half a point? I think it was a quarter of a point. Didn't seem to an, uh, affect the inflection, uh, the, the inflation, but the inflation did tick up one-tenth of one percent. So, which isn't too bad considering you had a rate hike. However, the 2.5%, which is not, their target is 2%, uh, which isn't incredibly high, but you have to understand that that number is compounding the other high inflation numbers that we've had over the past four years. So that's the reason prices are up 20 to 30% because you had 9% inflation compounded by 7 percent 7% inflation compounded by 6% inflation, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to two. The story goes on to say, while inflation has declined from its near record levels in 2022, prices have continued to increase in the past four years. According to a Fox Business analyst, food prices rose about 22.8%, energy prices rose about 42.4%, and a new vehicle prices rose about 19%. Social media users mock the idea of Harris running on a dream economy. Of course, it's not a dream economy at all. The funny thing is, uh, though, is that there have been a slew of headlines today, speaking of gaslighting, that say things like market watch wholesale prices flatten out and signal tamed inflation in guts of the US economy so they can't even get that right and then going back to the federalist Kamala Harris avoids giving straight answers like the plague at town hall Harris has never given a straight answer off she has no answer at all she danced around direct answers in the end said nothing about substance and then it goes on to the Univision the Univision um, town hall that she had where she didn't really answer questions and she had all canned answers that applied to whatever. Trump announces new tax proposal and it's pretty awesome. Today I'm announcing that part of the tax cuts we will uh, make interest rates on car loans fully deductible. If you didn't hear about that, that was kind of exciting. And then I'm going to get into another article in just a second. Hey, bear with me here for a minute. Sorry about that. I'm going to move on to uh, next article here from the National Review. American educators helping Chinese military. So this is about um, schools helping Sing Hu, which is a nonprofit group affiliated with Thomas Jefferson. So Sing Hu and its affiliates educate prospective Chinese university students and disciplines with possible defense applications. A recent investigation in the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party and the House Education and Workforce Committee reveals that the joint research part, uh, partnerships between U.S. universities and Chinese military-linked schools have enabled the transfer of tech with military applications. Why does the Why do the left... And this is the problem with me, is that, well, the problem that I have, is that the Chinese Communist Party is ideological enemy of the United States. So can we have a friendly, competitive, uh, a friendly, competitive economies? Sure. 
We don't have to be belligerent toward each other. It's all true. But people have to understand is China is the enemy ideologically. They're not a free society. They're not a capitalist society. So they're an authoritarian, totalitarian, some might say, communist regime that abuses the civil rights of their own citizens. And in some cases, enforce genocidal policies on minorities they don't like. Why people, particularly people on the left, are engaged with the communist Chinese. And some people on the right, even Mitch McConnell. But you had um, Harvard, the head of the Harvard uh, Bioscience Lab, taking money from the communist Chinese in what appears to be biological technology transfers. How does that even happen? Not sure. So more from the National Review, Biden administration bullying of pro-life physicians gets SCOTUS smackdown. The U.S. Supreme Court left in place the decision by U.S. Fifth uh, Circuit Court of Appeals against the Biden administration's attempts to weaponize federal law to force pro-life emergency physicians to perform induced abortions. So this is a victory for pro-life folks, um, particularly pro-life physicians. Um, So the Supreme Court upholds the appeal, which means that certain physicians won't be forced by the hospitals, I would imagine, to perform or induce abortions. So there is a small victory for the Supreme Court. More news from just the news. At least 2,084 California children have received gender reassignment procedures from 2019 to 2023. Also in the news, Fox News, Milton's gone, but the political storm keeps raging over federal government's hurricane efforts on what he calls Trump's onslaught of lies. Biden urges former president to get a life, man. What happened here is that the federal response, first of all, people believe that the hurricanes were steered or created by the Democrats to get some electoral advantage. But what made that even more plausible was the fact that the federal government slow walking their response was even a little bit more disturbing. That, and then you have pictures of federal helicopters rotor washing a civilian uh, emergency response and aid stations. There were several incidents of that. It wasn't just one incident. There were several. Also in the news, next gov, the General Services Administration log in to offer face recognition to customer agencies. After months of testing the federal government's identity proofing and single sign-on service, login.gov is opening up its face recognition capabilities across the government to agencies who want to use them. This is basically an update surrounding the Fed's use of facial recognition, which is being rolled out across the country, but some people had some experience with it, with the TSA, but we're having more and more of this. Um, because what, what's going to happen is you will not be able to maintain anonymity like in China, There's no anonymity anonymity in China. If you're driving around, they know exactly who's going where through facial recognition with on-street cameras, et cetera. So that's coming here as well. You also have that in London. Although since London is supposed to be a democracy and not totalitarian, places in England are very tight-lipped about the use of facial recognition uh, integrated with the amount of street cameras they have.
I think that's it for me today. Thanks for joining me today. Please engage the channel, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Don't forget, I'm live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. on Rumble. Might try YouTube as well. I'm gonna try to start streaming multiple streams. Maybe to bit shoot as well, or we'll have to see about that. But thanks for joining me today. Remember you're under attack psychologically and biologically, so stay hip to the trick. Have a great weekend, and I will see you Monday. Respect. Are you implying here some kind of conspiracy? You can't handle the truth.